we are here with Rick Witt, who is our Washington Telecom and Media Council. Rick, talk to us a little bit with us a little bit about um, why broadband uh, belongs in this stimulus bill. Sure. Well, any economist will tell you that infrastructure is a key enabler of economic growth, whether you're talking about roads or bridges. In this case, you're talking about broadband. And broadband is telecommunications capacity. The more you have of it, the more economic uh, growth more, and the more activity you can create. Um, and the benefits that come from this actually are, are not just the direct benefits of building the infrastructure in the first place, but it's the indirect benefits, what some economists will call the positive externalities or the spillovers. Um, and this is essentially the activity that is built on top of broadband as a platform itself. So once you put the broadband in the ground or in the air, whether it's wireline or wireless, then uh, you have uh, entrepreneurs able to, to build new applications, new devices, new services um, on top of that infrastructure. That itself creates a whole new loop of economic activity, which actually far exceeds uh, the original value derived from the broadband itself. So both direct and indirect benefits together make broadband a really crucial enabler of economic activity. Tell us a little bit about the provisions uh, in the stimulus package for broadband. Well, the Senate bill has about $7 billion, um, which is at this point a mix of, of uh, grants and loans, uh, which is money given to the broadband providers, as, as well as tax incentives. The House bill is about $6 billion, um, and that does not include tax incentives. So it's, it's, it's loans and, and grants uh, uh, to be administered by, by the Department of Commerce. So we're now at a stage where we're looking to have the, the two versions of the broadband provisions to be reconciled uh, by committee. And, and what's your take on uh, what provisions can sort of have the most impact in both expanding broadband access as well as creating jobs? Well, here I think uh, a balance is necessary. We want to create jobs as quickly as possible. At the same time, we want to make sure that we're upgrading to the next generation of broadband infrastructure. The United States for a number of years now has been slipping behind many other leading countries around the world in terms of broadband deployment and uptake. And so we think it, that this is a, an important opportunity for the country to try to take that next leap ahead in technology. So you want to create something that is going to be timely in terms of making sure that the, the jobs are there, that the activity is there now, um, uh, but it's also going to be for creating things that wouldn't otherwise be created. So it has to be relevant and tailored to the particular purpose. We also want to make sure that this is a very transparent and accountable process so that you know where the money is going to and then after the fact be able to determine that money actually was spent well. So we think if you use some of those kind of basic principles here, um, that will go a long way towards making sure that you get the best bang for the buck. And finally, there are some provisions in the bill dealing with uh, openness, the openness of these broadband networks. Tell us a little bit about uh, those provisions. Sure. Well, as I mentioned, you know, the, the notion of the indirect benefits, the spillover effects from broadband are actually many times over the direct benefits of building the infrastructure. And the Internet, of course, is the ultimate open platform. And by using the Internet over broadband, you can create all these great economic benefits. Um, so we believe the openness provisions, which essentially mean that consumers and others have the right to use the Internet access connections over broadband without interference from the broadband provider, actually is a key element of the stimulus package. So we're pleased to see that both the Senate and the House have versions of an openness uh, requirement uh, for those who are taking the grants or the loans. It remains to be seen what language actually survives. There are somewhat different versions on the Senate side versus the House side, but we remain confident that at the end of the day there will be some openness requirements uh, in, in the package, which, as I said, uh, we think really is a key enabler itself of the economic activity that we really need to see in this country. Great. Rick, thanks a lot for talking with us. Thank you.